on the heels of Bungie getting independence, announcing cross saves and plans for crossplay with Destiny, and along with them striking Destiny deals with Stadia, is all this prep for a Destiny 3 release that is right around the corner? Let's get into it. What's up, peoples? What's up, peoples? What's up, peoples? It's your boy, MM2K, back again with another one. Hey, yo, can you do me a huge favor? Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Rock those bells for notifications, please, so you know when your boy's dropping these doses. I appreciate all of y'all straight up, because you know what? I'm not too proud to ask. All right, let's get into it, people. What's the deal, MM2K? Well, it seems like... After being mired in the past with problems, you know, particularly with Activision in the game or series in general, that um, Destiny and Bungie may have just let us know that there is a Destiny 3 right around the corner, right? Now, for those of you that, again, live under a rock, uh, let me bring you back up to speed. Let me do it quickly, right? Um, you know, Bungie was mired in problems with Activision because of the turnaround time and the expectancy that Activision had that uh, Bungie would release new content for their game Destiny, right? Um, it wasn't working out for them. So they ended up getting their freedom, freedom from Activision as far as the deal that they struck with them to cover the Destiny game on the heels of Activision also having quote-unquote poor financials as far as they were concerned, right? So... They got their freedom from them, and then they just went on a tear, man. They started breaking deals with people, you know, throwing out expansions, trying to get that mind share back. And most notably, they have an exclusive deal with, with Stadia. They're going to be the, they're the first aforementioned game on Stadia's uh, monthly streaming service that comes with the service itself, okay, with the paid-for service. Uh, so on the heels of all that, and per a recent interview with Polygon, it appears that our people at Bungie may have let us know that this is all in prime for Destiny 3. And this is all courtesy of an interview that they did again with Polygon. So, and, and I'm reading this interview via VGR.com or giving you accounts of this interview via them. All right. So let's get into it. All right, and I, I just want to say this first and foremost, man. You know, I, I don't want to slight anybody and what they doing. VGR, I don't know your situation. But, bruh, y'all got to kill it with all these advertisements, man. I mean, if it's that bad, y'all might need to find a new gig. But I'm, I'm a, your boy, mm 2 k is going to try to help y'all out a little bit. So, because, <laughs> dang, man, these bugs is thirsty with all these damn ads. All right, so courtesy of VGR.com, recently, Polygon held an interview discussing why Bungie can't just keep releasing content for the same game forever. It's a really good question considering that 80% of the community don't want Destiny 3 to happen. Hmm. Mark Noseworthy, general manager, said, Destiny 2 is a huge game. We mean in terms of the scope of the game, that complexity, but also just the amount of space that we take on people's hard drives. We can't really just grow the game indefinitely forever. All right. And this is because current gen consoles can't handle the disk space for a game like Destiny. Considering Destiny 2 is approximately 100 gigabytes on consoles, so for players who have a 500 gigabyte of hard drive space, that would only be able to enjoy four more Destiny size games. Look, here's how your boy slice it up, man. Straight up. Um, I, I get that a lot of people uh, that are currently into Destiny 2 don't want to see a destiny 3 just yet but i hate to say this y'all y'all <laughs> are a d diminishing group and death and bungie sees that bungie des definitely sees that the support that they had back in the day even with all these improvements and enhancements are not expanding mind share and they got to do something big and there's nothing bigger than coming out with destiny 3 i get it y'all fully invested in destiny 2 Destiny 2 did bring on some new people that love the game, that are more vocal about the game and their love. But again, in bringing you guys on, they hemorrhaged and lost a lot more, including people like me. I was a big time Destiny person. Destiny made me 
go from the 360 generation into the Xbox One PlayStation 4 generation of consoles. I was gonna be a straight PC guy. I was just living it up on Destiny, the first Destiny on my 360. I played that 99.9% .9 of the time. I was built me a rig for the division, you know, with all the hype for the division. And a lot of us had said and had resigned to the fact that, hey, if the next set of consoles is just going to be about polygon and compute units, let's go where the polygon and compute units are the best with your PC. But you know what changed all that for me? The revelation that in order for me to continue to play Destiny, because again, for the same problem, that they had to expand, you know what I'm saying? They had to expand for more room that they were going to drop support for destiny on the 360 generation of consoles and go to the eighth generation of consoles and you had x amount of time to convert your saves over right so that forced me to get an xbox one uh console you know to continue my game right and with destiny 2 releasing earlier on it disappointed me and many others okay like i said they hemorrhaged more gamers hardcore gamers at that than they brought on these changes that they did at two are refreshing but again they need to there needs to be a reinvention a true realization of destiny's potential and i think they can do that with three again as they allude to in this interview you know if they go to a bigger platform and in, in, a, in a sequel and in that sequel they need big expansive worlds they need plenty of travel they need big and explosive and a dynamic uh, missions. And they need a truly gripping story that, you know what I'm saying, that puts together the whole saga. And it has to be that games as a service title that games as a service titles were meant to be. You know what I'm saying? Like, the original footprint and the original aesthetic and thought process behind destiny pre-release was it was going to be this crazy story expansive type game and that's the lore of games as, as a service and it fell short of that even if you did like what the end result was it did fall short of that and with their independence with the development talent that they have with the the money that they got and you know from different investors and and the fact that they're striking big deals with stadia and so forth they have a divine, divine opportunity to reach that realization, that, that potential fully. And I'm looking forward to it. And I myself, I, I, y'all 80% that don't want a three, I hate to say it, they can't do it without a sequel. So I'm looking forward to it. But I think one of the bigger takeaways from this is on the heels of all this potential, all this potential growth and all this potential good stuff that could come to the Destiny franchise. If Microsoft in particular is smart, they will jump at the, they will jump at the opportunity to do exclusive content to get exclusive deals with Bungie and the upcoming Destiny 3. But with that said, that's it from your boy MM2K. Hey, let me know what you think. Is do you think Destiny 3 is right around the corner? Do you think that Destiny 3, if it is right around the corner, is a good thing? Because who cares what I think? Let me know what you think in the comment section below. But if you did like what I had to say, you can catch me on the corner every boulevard. Check out the links below to follow me. Hey, yo, I do a show with your peoples, Snow Bunny, Neethals, Dirt Griggity. It's called Scram Punks. We do it on Dirt Griggity's channel. Just look up hashtag Scram Punks for more information on that. With that said, also, check out my brothers, my brethren. The broadband bullies, we out here doing a damn thing. Check out that Discord link where we be cutting up, you know what I'm saying? It's all jokes, baby. You know, check out that Patreon link, you know what I mean? Check out that link to that gear below, because it's fly. And last but not least, follow your boy on the official Hard Knock Digital Culture channel. It is called Hard Knock Digital Culture, and it is on Mighty Mo... It's twitch.tv, I'm sorry forward slash mighty most 2000 go there man we are highlighting hardcore games we got hardcore game streams we got podcasts dedicated to hardcore gaming you know what i'm saying and we also got podcasts and streams and interviews and stuff like that dedicated to hardcore media including hardcore anime hardcore martial arts something you new and unique you definitely don't want to miss it and with that being said you guys have a wonderful, wonderful gaming day. Peace!